pals! Welcome back! This is the second episode of Movies We Love, Movies We Hate. I'm Andrew Forslef, and for those of you who are new to my reviewing videos, I'll tackle two movies per video, I'll talk about one movie I really love, and then talk about one movie I absolutely despise! I don't really review new releases, I'll leave that to people like Jeremy Johns, Katherine Reitman, and the Schmoes. Now sure, occasionally I might catch a new release that I'll just have to review, but for the most part I'll be sticking to movies that have already been out for quite some time. With no further ado, let's begin! This week's movie choices, Taken and Saw, the final chapter. Taken, starring a 50-something-year-old Liam Neeson. I love this movie. It's corny as hell sometimes, but awesome as fuck. Liam Neeson plays this old, beaten, retired man who used to work for the government. His wife divorced him and married some rich guy. His daughter Kim barely knows him, and in an attempt to be a better father, that's why he left the CIA. Neeson's character's ex-wife, played by Famke Jansen, I hate struggling to pronounce that name, is a major bitch. I can understand it was probably difficult being married to a CIA operative all those years, but man, this bitch was PMSing in every scene! Anyways, one day Neeson gets a mysterious call from his daughter, who randomly asks him to have lunch with her. Thinking she just wants to hang out with her father, he of course agrees to. In the next scene, he's waiting at the restaurant all excited, his daughter walks in, and as soon as she sees him, she runs toward him with joy. She has got the most awkward run I have ever seen. Also, this girl's like 25 years old playing Neeson's 17 year old daughter. But hey, those are both ignorable factors. The movie's awesome. Anyways, to Neeson's surprise, the bitch ex-wife shows up as well. Turns out Kimmy really just wants to hit up France with her friend and needs her dad's permission to leave the country. Neeson doesn't agree to the terms at first because his past occupation really made him aware of how bad certain parts of the world are. But after seeing his daughter so heartbroken, he finally agrees to the terms on the condition that Kim calls him every five minutes of the trip. Jumping ahead, Kim and her friend's plane arrives in Paris, and they do the smart thing. They share a cab with a mysterious, but handsome, complete stranger. On the cab ride, the girls get dropped off first and say farewell to their new taxi friend. As soon as they're out of sight though, he pulls out a phone, calls some more mysterious friends, and gives them the address of the apartment the girls are staying in. Minutes later, Kim's up in the apartment, she remembers her dad's conditions, and decides to give him a call. While on the phone with him, she realizes that some dressed in black strangers have entered the apartment and they aren't really there to chill or play Twister. She informs her father of the danger and acting fast, Neeson decides to record the remainder of the call. Kim, now hiding under the bed, with only the slight comfort of her father's voice on the phone, awaits to hear my most favorite line of the movie. They're going to take you. Whew! Gives me chills every time. Anyways, his daughter is of course taken, hence the title of the movie, and Liam Neeson is left with no choice but to hunt down the kidnappers and gain back his daughter all on his own. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. We, the audience, join him in his journey, and it's definitely one of the most fun rides I've ever taken. Before seeing Taken, I wasn't the biggest Liam Neeson fan. I mean, I liked him, don't get me wrong. Taken just launched him up to my top 10 favorite action hero stars. The movie's loaded with suspense and will certainly keep you on the edge of your seat wondering whether or not Neeson's got what it takes to get his daughter back. There's plenty of ass whooping scenes for the boys and enough teenage girls in distress for the female viewers to relate to. Overall, I give Taken three and a half stars. There's a few ridiculous scenes where Neeson's character just seems a bit too lucky, but nothing stops this movie from being badass. On to the bad movie. Saw 3D, also known as Saw the Final Chapter even though we can probably all expect to Saw 8 in the near future. I loved Saw 1. It was a fun film, much like David Fincher's 7. Saw 2, fun and boring. Saw 3, fucked up, <laughs> with plenty of gag moments. Saw 4, right along the same lines as Saw 3. Saw 5, cash in sequel only. Boring death traps. Saw 6, loved it. Don't you wish you could just murder insurance companies every now and then? Saw 6 did just that, 
and it was a fulfilling ride. Saw 3D. Way to not live up to your predecessor. Now Saw 3D was certainly not lacking in the bloody death traps. And let's be honest, we pay to see the folks fail in those traps. Believe me, I'm all for disgusting gore fests. I've made a few of those movies myself. But a movie needs a lot more than fun death traps and gore to be considered an actual good movie. This is where Saw 3D falls flat. Let's talk about the characters. You've got Hoffman played by the one and only Costas Mandalore. Hoffman, as all of us Saw followers know by now, is the new man behind all the Jigsaw murders. Hoffman was left in charge of all aspects of the game when the original Jigsaw was killed. I will say that throughout the span of the whole series, the Hoffman character actually became my favorite. The reason I like him so much is because he's got such a strong will to live and remain uncaught by his fellow police co-workers. We nearly lost him a few times back in Saw 6. Aside from Hoffman, you've got Jill Tuck, the ex-wife of the original deceased Jigsaw. And I'll be honest, I think she's a terrible actor. We at least got to see her die, and to make things better, it was with the reverse bear trap! Finally! We get to see that thing kill somebody! And it is awesome! They must not have shown much of Jill in the previous Saw films, because I never noticed her weak acting until this installment. Actor Carrie Elways, Wesley from The Princess Bride, returns to play the character of Dr. Lawrence Gordon from the first Saw film, and he's probably got a total of five minutes on the screen. Lame! If you're gonna bring a character back, actually bring him back! The last character I'll bring up is that of Bobby Dagan, played by one of the Boondock Saints, Mr. Sean Patrick Flannery. He's the player of the main game of Saw 3D, and basically he's just being punished for pretending to be a Jigsaw victim for personal profit. He had to have seen this shit coming. Anyways, throughout the traps, he runs into all of his friends and manages to save none of them from their bloody and horrible deaths. Which is fine. I mean, we all secretly want them to fail anyways. <laughs> While watching the film, I kept finding ways to counter some of the traps. There's a scene where this one chick is strapped to a seat with a fish hooked down her throat. Bobby Dagan has to yank it out, but if she screams, a machine measuring volume decibels will slowly begin piercing her with pointy metal rods, eventually killing her. If I were Bobby, I'd knock that bitch out and then pull the hook out. But of course, he doesn't do that. Also, a little later in the movie, Bobby himself has to pierce hooks into his chest and then hoist himself up about 20 feet in the air to save his wife from getting cooked in a furnace. If I were him, I'd so be hooking those chains to my belt loops or something. He obviously prefers pain. You can look at it in a couple different ways. Either they're just not well thought out traps, or Bobby's just a dumbass. I read that Saw 3D's director, Kevin Gruter, didn't have as much creative control as he did while fabulously directing Saw 6. Supposedly, against his will, he was yanked away from Paranormal Activity 2 by Lionsgate to direct Saw 3D. The script had already been approved and the traps were already set. He didn't have much say in anything, so basically, this crap wasn't his fault. Oh, and perhaps Paranormal Activity 2 would have been good had he had stayed on board. Ah, uh, the script is poor. The opening trap involves Jigsaw punishing a girl for sleeping around with two different men. Really? Jigsaw, you tackled a corrupt insurance company, and now you're gonna move on to a love triangle between some college kids? This movie sucks. Saw 3D. I only recommend it to those who dig toxic waste. Huh? 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 What is this? Hello, Andrew. Lately, you've been criticizing movies. Have you even a clue how much work goes into just one film? Yeah. What gives you the right to judge? I'm a filmmaker. You call yourself a filmmaker, directing movies about characters you didn't create? You're pathetic. I hope you'll enjoy the film I've prepared for you tonight. It's the first film of the Twilight Saga. No, please! Please, no! Anything but that! Please! Anything but that! <laughs> <laughs> Liam Neeson? Where's my daughter? <laughs> Thanks for joining me. This is Movies We Love, Movies We Hate. I'm Angie Forsla, and I'm happy to share my thoughts on movies with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Pretzi 2.